Paul Herman is the CEO and founder of HIP Investor, Inc. Paul will share case studies of S&P 500 companies that are generating profit through cost reductions, revenue growth, tax benefits, and brand enhancement, all of which are enhanced through systematic carbon accounting. Then, Climate Earth CEO Chris Erickson will describe how carbon accounting parallels financial accounting and why maximizing environmental value drives shareholder value. We will also share a customer case study that illustrates how carbon accounting can be an effective centerpiece of bottom line benefits and a competitive advantage. Just quickly, a, a little background on HIP. HIP stands for Human Impact Plus Profit. HIP Investor advises corporations like Walmart on how to realize sustainable, profitable growth and inspired employees. It builds investment indices and research for investors who seek to make more money by doing more good. Paul's financial expertise began with his Wharton School finance degree and work at McKinsey & Company, developing incentive regulation for energy companies and regulators, as well as strategic improvements for Fortune 500 corporate clients and government. Paul's own HIP investing includes companies in microfinance, organic food, renewable energy, affordable health care, and B2B systems. Paul is an investment committee member of the, of the Patient Capital Fund, a member of Investor Circle, and an advisor to Net Impact. Climate Earth and HIP Investor have teamed up for this educational webinar with the common purpose of sharing the business case for greenhouse gas management. Our topic, Boosting Your Bottom Line by Counting All Your Carbon, is the remarkable backdrop of President Obama's call for legislation to establish a market-based cap-and-trade system. As Paul will explain, organizations that recognize the strategic value of carbon for increased profitability stand to gain a real market advantage. Our presentation is going to take about 40 minutes, and then we will have time for your questions. And now, I'm pleased to introduce Paul Herman. Great. Thanks, Frankie. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us this morning, and uh, glad to see people from uh, across the country, uh, across all sectors, business, social, and government, and, uh, and, uh, and from uh, large companies that uh, uh, can generate value through managing their carbon more efficiently. Um, so what we're going to cover today is um, uh, what we're going to cover today is as soon as we flip the slide here, uh, how to boost your bottom line by counting all your carbon. So we take a quick quiz here. So raise your left hand if you like to do good, and uh, raise your right hand if uh, you like to make money, and raise both your hands if you like to do both. And the intersection of that is what we call HIP, human impact and profit. And this breaks down the traditional business view that to do anything environmental or social or that has a positive human impact um, actually has a financial trade-off, because that is not true anymore, if it ever was. And on a going forward basis, companies that create environmental value will also generate financial value. So uh, why is this important? So these are the sequence of charts here and numbers could be great internally for your business case and especially with your CFO. Uh, my background uh, is in finance, so I'm always thinking about how the CFO or investors or Wall Street will hear this. So on the customer side, this is from a Cone survey um, done over the past few years. Uh, more than two out of three customers want to do good with their, with their buying, with their purchasing dollars. And half will not buy a product if they don't, or don't perceive that it's good. And since more than a third of customers will tell a friend if it's good or bad, uh, delivering good products will spread fast. And from on the investor side, two-thirds of investors, individual investors, seeing doing good as a positive indicator. And even in these uh, treacherous financial markets, individual investors, especially ones in their 20s and 30s, are looking to sustainable companies um, and seeking to put them in their equity portfolios since they have a 20, 30, 40-year time horizon. And one out of five customers will refuse to invest in a company if they don't think that it's doing good. So what does this mean uh, to employees internally? It means that uh, over the past years, and I think we'll see these numbers go up uh, this year as well, is that two-thirds to three-quarters of employees um, uh, consider sustainability meaningful to where they work and how they invest and how their employer relates to not only social issues but environmental issues. Uh, and so finally, in the setup here, McKinsey just did a, a recent survey, which you can find in the uh, McKinsey Quarterly uh, uh, online. Uh, they surveyed 238 CFOs and investors and 127 uh, leaders in uh, corporate social responsibility and socially responsible investing. 
Um, and 85% of the respondents see long-term financial value from environmental, social, and governance initiatives. Um, uh, specifically, 85% uh, uh, in environmental, similar in governance, a little lower in social. But of the CFOs and investors, approximately half see them as less important contributing to shareholder value during this crisis. Um, and that uh, doesn't sound very prudent because these uh, environmental initiatives actually create value in the short term as well as the long term. They have very short payback cycles. Additionally, uh, from the CSR professional perspective, corporate managers, uh, one of the questions we can be asked is what's the shareholder value of uh, an eco initiative? And 53% of CSR professionals said they did not know. Luckily, the 47% said it contributed some value from 2 to 10% of overall shareholder value. But it was shocking. Uh, to me, this is a shocking number. And then finally, a small proportion, about 1 in 7 out of current CSR managers, actually prioritized charitable giving as the most important benefit of environmental social governance initiatives, even more than revenue growth. Uh, overall, for companies, they saw brand enhancement and talent management and society's expectations rated higher than hardcore cost reduction and revenue growth. And so we have here the gap between how this value is created and how it's understood from a CFO and investor point of view. So what we'll go through right now is uh, from a HIP perspective. HIP stands for Human Impact and Profit. Remember, raise both your hands. And uh, HIP is based on um, uh, a hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so when you solve a human problem in health or wealth or earth or equality or trust, then you can generate not only financial value, you can uh, inspire people and more teamwork, um, and it can improve the planet. So we're going to dig in mainly around earth or earth-related topics. Um, last slide here about HIP is uh, HIP has a HIP 100 and a HIP 30 index. Uh, we also have versions of those that prioritize eco-initiatives. Uh, we've been an advisor to Walmart and to Nike. And we've published in Fast Company and been quoted in the Wall Street Journal about our expertise. OK, so the three questions to ask as a uh, professional leader or investor are, what human problem does this solve? Health, wealth, earth, equality, trust. How do you design it to generate profit as well as impact? And what management practices are in place to sustain that? So a, a product which you might find in, uh, you'll certainly find in a place like Walmart uh, or in your grocery store is Clorox Greenworks. Uh, which has also been um, uh, part, which has also been supported by the Sierra Club, uh, who's a partner with Clorox on this product. <clears throat> it's a cleaning product that works just as well as all the other Clorox products do. Uh, but the benefits are that it's non-allergenic from a health perspective. You don't get sick. Uh, you don't have to take a nap. Uh, it's great if you have kids around. Um, and um, uh, for it's a very small premium, a less a lower premium than traditional organic cleaning products. And from an eco perspective, it meets the EPA's design for environment standards um, and ends up being uh, biodegradable, which uh, also makes it renewable. So in just over a year, Clorox has doubled the category size uh, for this uh, line of products and has a 42% market share in that. So they haven't necessarily stolen share from products like Method. They've doubled the category, leading to $200 million in annual sales. So obviously, environmental value drives financial value. Here in Silicon Valley, in California, um, Sun is uh, leading the way from an Earth perspective on saving both money and carbon with its green data centers. So technically, it's enabled uh, virtualization to do compu uh, computer power sharing and, and processing across multiple servers. Physically, as you can see from the photo here, the servers have been placed for energy efficiency as they generate heat and require ventilation. Uh, Sun's data centers have implemented energy sensors, so they've cut their servers by uh, about 40% here not only eliminating carbon and the associated future cost of carbon, but they've avoided $9 million bucks plus in constructing new data centers. The payback is less than three years. Again, a short-term attractive payback. Um, and PG&E, the utility, has paid a $1 million in incentives. Again, environmental value driving financial value. 